I moved from Florida to Ohio right around the beginning of my freshman year of high school. And when I moved, I was just sort of that loner kid because I didn't know anybody. Everyone went to school, middle school, with uh, you know people. So everyone had their groups. There was the football players and the cheerleaders, the jocks, you know, skateboarders, stuff like that. But I didn't really know anyone. It was kind of weird. So I just was kind of shy, I guess. I was kind of quiet. I didn't really make any effort to make friends. I remember back in study hall, that useless class, um, I met one of my best friends even until this day, and his name's Nick. You guys probably know Nick, he's in the group. You've probably seen him on the channel, you've probably seen me doing videos with him. And when we met, you know, it, was, it wasn't like we were just clicking all of a sudden, we didn't just have this bromance. No, I mean, it just kind of, I was working out, he saw me working out, you know, we worked out together a few times and eventually we started going to the same gym. And as I got to know him more, I realized, you know, this is the first time that I've ever met somebody that is into the, a lot of the same things that I am. This was a point in my life, I'm in my early teens, I'm I'm starting to care about self-improvement. You know, it started with the gym. Start, and then it started into nutrition. We, we, we used to go to the lunch line, and you know at the time when you're in lunch at school, they got the chocolate milk, the whole milk. I'm drinking like two skim milks. We're taking the buns off of our bread. We're trying to be healthy. We're trying to get, we're just eating the chicken breast, the soggy lunch <laughs> room chicken breast. So like, and we were also into girls. Like, you know, you're a young teenager, you start getting that testosterone, you, you wanna meet more girls. And so this was the first time that I had felt that connection. Like this dude, me and this dude are on the same path. He's my teammate. You know, and then it started from there, man. We, we started lifting. We started, we would go out on the weekends. This was, a, we were a little older at this point, about night, uh, 19. We wouldn't even go into the bars, we weren't allowed. But even when we turned 21, we would go out and we started to hear about, you know, game, going out of talking to girls, just opening up sets of girls. And we'd push each other. He would, he would coach me, you know, because he was, he was like that, uh, he had that more spirited personality. He was more free. He was used to being, he could just talk to any girl. And I always admired that about him. I always admired it because, like, I was in my head, you know. So we would go out, he would coach me, he was like, come on, dude, just go up to her, go up to her. And then he would see I was making progress. And he was like, all right, do this, do this. Oh, going for the kiss. And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Going for the kiss, bro. And I would go in for the kiss and it would work. And I'm like, dude, fuck yeah, you know, fuck yeah. So that's where it kicked off. We would just, time goes on, we start caring about more things. You know, we, I remember our Elliot Hulse phase. We, we literally built the entire thoracic spine table with the, the uh, the foam roller, and you know, we would stretch out. We would do the deep breathing in the morning. We would do our bioenergetics together. I would go over his house. He'd come over. We started meditating, listening to Infinite Waters, diving deep. It was just good, man. It was like, yes, th like this is this is my bro. You know, this is we're both on the same team. We're both going together. We get older, we started. I remember we probably walked this same neighborhood. Like he comes over. We'll just, we've probably walked these streets. I'm over here. We walked those, that entire neighborhood hundreds, it's probably a thousand times, dude. With this one guy, we probably, you know, talked about the same shit over and over, but it, we's, we've always been there to make certain that we pick each other up. When we're down, he's there, picks me up. When he's down, you know, some words of love, some words, some uplifting, positive words. Knowing Nick has been one of the greatest life-changing things, you know, for me. That it helped me keep my mindset right, get into new skills and habits, business, motivation. You know, I, it's just countless things. And I, I don't think that it's talked about enough that your friend group, your social circle, has such a huge impact on your success in life. Because your best friend, 
or your friends, but your best friend is sort of like you. And even on your bad days, he's like, he's like the good part of you because he's also reading, you know, when you don't feel like reading, he's probably reading sometimes he's doing other stuff and he's going to be able to sort of come on, dude, like, come on, get back on the fucking track. I just know that there's so many of these social circles that happen where we don't even question. There's a lot of shitty friends I'm hanging out with. I don't really like them all. They're not really caring about my success or pushing me forward. And I'm still hanging out with them every week. It needs to be said that you've got to leave, man. You've got to leave the social circle. You've got to get rid of some of these people in your life. And I know that may be hard, especially if you're young, because you, know, you don't have access to that many people. But you don't need that many people. All you need is like one or two good people in your life. And it, it will benefit you so much. Like a lot of people think you've got to go about it alone. You've got to be this wizard and know everything. Having a friend that you two are working on the same thing. Brian Tracy said this is called the, the mastermind. Two people. He called it the the master, I think, uh, master system. He said you get done in one year what one person gets done in 10 years. If you're working together. That's a crazy thing to think about. I don't think we, we put enough emphasis on developing these strong relationships. Or if we do, it's normally not... Like usually we're just getting together smoking weed in the social circle, right? Or you're just drinking or, you know, you got these social, everyone's sort of, they don't, you don't feel that love and that brotherhood. And you need that. You need that, man. And it just, it's such a true truth to think about that. If you have guys in your social circle that are going towards the negative stuff, you're also going to go to that negative side. You're going to eat more junk food. You're probably going to gain more weight. Wait, if you're the skinniest one of your friend group, your friends are all fat, you're probably going to start to gain more weight. None of them are working out. You're not going to work out. All right. If the majority is on this side, the minority is coming also. All right. So if you have friends, though, that are over here and they're making money, they're getting girls, you're also more likely to get girls. They're going to coach you. They're going to push you forward. They probably have a social circle already. You know, if you have guys that care about business, they're probably going to want to work together on something. Maybe you have a different set of skills. Maybe your skill is more technical and your friends is more, you know, being in, being the face of the company. Maybe it's something like that. And so having, figuring that out and, and doing something about it though is crucial, man. I've seen my brother. I remember back in the day he had all his friends and all his friends would just come and like bum weed off of him. And you could just tell he's discontent. This kid could have worked out, could have been like a monster, dude. He could have, smart fucking kid. You know, but having these friends that kind of like leeches and don't care about you, it really, in the sense, like they don't care about you. You don't want friends that are very secretive, that withhold, like, no, dude, stop being secretive. All right, stop being a cunt. Stop, like, ask how my week was, not just talk about yourself. You know, there's a lot of people like that. They don't care. They don't care about you. Man, you find a really golden thing if you find a good friend. And it's going to it's gonna change your life, guys. I, I, it's crucial. If you've got, pick, look at your friend group. If you don't have one, you'll make friends. But, but be, you know, start to develop yourself where you can, when it's time to meet that person, you know, that attraction happens. Because like, okay, this dude, we're, we're going the same way. Let's do it together. Let's start talking. Let's go out. Let's hang out. Let's have fun. They become a part of your tribe. Doing that alone is folly. I really believe that. I can't state enough how much of an importance this is your social group. Finding people that fit your life, that lift your life up. These are the people that you're going to have with you when you're an old man. These are the people that are coming with you for the long run. You know, the people now that you just, that you hate, like, why do you hate? And it's okay. You know, you're going to have a lot of uh, fights. Me and Nick fight all the fucking time, dude. I, I, you know, gets on, gets on my nerves. I get on his nerves. We fight about business. We fight about 
Workouts. You want to do this workout? No, dude. Fuck that workout. We want to do this workout. Dude, I don't want to do that. All right, well, we'll work out separately. You know, we're around the fire. Sometimes we'll argue. All the, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to talk about one thing. He's arguing. And it turns into an argument. But you know what? At the end of the day, we're bros. And that's what matters. We're in this for the long run. This isn't some shallow thing where we get butt hurt. When you're a man, you have testosterone. When you bring a bunch of men together, you better believe there's going to be some sort of fighting. Maybe not physical throwing fists, but you're going to get in arguments. You're going to work things out. You're going to get to the bottom of it. At the bottom, there's love. So guys, you know, it's up to you. It's crucial that you have a tribe in your life. It's essential to making progress in self-development. All right. You know, if you don't have it in the real world, world, come join us online. Come join us in this Facebook group. The Monk Mode Mastermind is a group that is dedicated to self-development. We do challenges. We push each other. This week, we're doing. We're trying to learn a handstand in one week. You know, you might not get it. If you can already do a handstand, we're trying to do a one-arm handstand. Hold it for five seconds. Having someone to push you. The other week, we were going out talking to at least five girls. Who knows what the future challenges are? But I know that you know this group is someone that can hold me accountable. And even when I'm, even when that little dog of depression creeps up on me in the morning, I got this group to lift my spirits. You know, to pick me up and get me back on track. So you know, if you're interested in this mastermind group, we're all about self-development, making that transformation. Come join us, guys. There's a link down below. It takes one minute to sign up. I would love to see you in there. We're almost at 200 members. It's freaking crazy. We got Alan Masashi just joined. You guys know Alan Zen Fit. We just got Alpheus Knowles. He's trying to open up a new dojo of next year. He's already surpassed. He's already got everything locked in. He said we're all welcome. So, you know, that's that's where we can do it at, man. Let's get the focus going. It's, we're already into August. Hopefully you got some momentum. If not... Start to build it, man. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. All right? I will see you guys soon. Peace.